What's up, YouTubers? So, <clears throat> uh, today I want to talk about Notes from Underground by Fyodor Dostoevsky. Um, I've read Dostoevsky's books before. I read like a Constance Garnet translation of uh, Crime and Punishment. I have to say that I read that and I didn't like it because, just purely because the action which the book is about somebody murdering somebody and that happens within like the first quarter of the book and then it's all analyzation and rationalization and I find that to be quite boring there was no drama there was no action so if you ask me about crime and punishment I can say that it's not my favorite book and I would not recommend it um which I feel like you know goes against what many of the literary experts actually say but there you go. If you want just a cool story, don't go for that one. So, notes from underground. I made my own notes and I'm going to go through them. Starts with... It's, got, it's written in, I suppose, two parts. And the first part is the lead character just sitting down waffling about his thoughts and his philosophy on life and telling you how he feels and blah 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 and I thought to myself when's the actual story start when does this story begin it doesn't just jump into it you got this big essay about how he feels about life and how he feels about himself before you get any story what that does is it gives you all of his thoughts but no action to judge his character on. So when you see a character in action, you can understand how other people treat that character. And then you can understand uh, at what position in society that character is. Uh, how much people respect that character. Uh, what that character has in his life. Uh, how that character treats other people. So when you see a character inside of a scene, you actually get a lot of information about the character and you can understand the character by the, his actions. You know, actions do speak louder than words. And we're reading a book and it's all full of words, but when an author, when an author puts a character in a scene... We see the character's actions and therefore we can judge uh, the value of this character in society. And from that scene, we can then decide as a reader if we want to listen to the philosophy of that character. And that's why we read. Well, that's why I read. So if I like a character, then I'm more interested in their philosophy. Now, what I didn't like about Notes from Underground is it started with a philosophy. It didn't start with a portrayal of how that character lives his life. So, therefore, I'm reading all of this philosophy and I'm saying, that's all fine, that's all fine and dandy, and it's all good to hear about your philosophy, but I want to see if you're a person who is worth listening to. I want to see you in action and then decide for myself whether I respect you enough in order to listen to your philosophy. Not just, you know, if a guy comes to me on the train station and starts talking about philosophy, I'm not just going to listen to his ideas. I want to know what his life is like. I want to know what he has. I want to know how he treats other people. I want to know how he acts around other people. I want to know how people treat him and what he allows himself to put up with. For example, if another person shouts at him, is he going to shout back? Or is he going to, you know, cry or be offended by it? You know, so these are all things that I want to see before I hear about philosophy. So, yeah, I heard all of the philosophy. I didn't know if any of it was valuable. I had to read through it. And then I get to the story, part two. Part two, we get to the story. And we find out that it's this despicable man. He says, I'm to blame, first because I'm more intelligent than everyone around me. So this dude is deluded and arrogant. 
another quote, but enough, not another word on this subject which you find so extremely interesting. I didn't say I found it interesting, as a matter of fact, I didn't. So then we're going through the story, and he has a very low opinion of himself. Um, so he says, obviously they regarded me as something like a quite ordinary fly. So that's very, like, low self-esteem. I suspected he was afraid of comp compromising himself by greeting a person as insignificant as I was. Again, we have a character who is incredibly low self-esteem. Yet, he's just tried to give his philosophy of life and educate people on what his life is. And uh, people treat him like a bug. So, how much ground and how much weight does his philosophy have if nobody else listens to him? They all dropped me and I sat crushed and annihilated. So, which is another thing that annoyed me, was that... His philosophy is, I'm so intelligent, I'm so amazing, uh, you're so fascinated by my story. And then the story is that one of his old friends is, or somebody he used to know from school is coming back to visit and they're putting, some of the people that he knows are putting on a party for this guy. And... Um, you know, it was like actually about three or th it was three weeks or a month ago since I read it. This video is in delay. However, uh, Zhirkov comes back. They're putting on a party for Zhirkov, and um, he wants to get involved. But he, you know, like he he's trying to convince these people. Please include me in the party, please. I want to be in your party, please. Um, yeah, he's saying, like, I'm better than all of these people, yet he's desperate to hang around with them. And they don't want to hang around with him. And he basically begs them to, to, to let him into this party, and they let him in. He even says, look, oh, the vileness, oh, the stupidity, oh, the narrowness of these rotten, sentimental souls... So he hates these people, but yet he wants to hang around them. Um, one of the characters says, That can never be, he replied, with a sort of unnatural self-assurance. I was like, that guy sounds cool. Let's have more of that guy. So the main character is a douche. So he, he describes him... Uh, he describes everyone around him as secure, but he himself is just as weak as a wet biscuit. That's what I wrote. Um, so, and then the story goes on, and he meets this woman, this prostitute, uh, who he praises her at first. He's like, you're amazing, you're the most beautiful woman, oh, you shouldn't be in this job. She likes him because of this, then she meets him the next day, and then... He just shouts at her and reveals that he's a despicable man. And he says, uh, I'd been humiliated, so I too wanted to humiliate. So even though he praised her on the day that he met her, then the second day or the second time that he met her, he's now saying, you're nothing but a whore, essentially. You alone must answer for all of this. Lisa, do you despise me? I said, looking at her point blank, trembling with impatience to find out what she thought. So he really, really cares what other people think about him, despite his long ranting philosophy at the beginning of how important and amazing he was. Yet, other people treat him like quite an ordinary fly, and he himself... Um, really, really cares just too much about what other people think. I'm so impatient to find out what she thought, even though he was calling her a dirty whore and saying, you know, well, he didn't say that in the book, but he was basically just abusing her and saying that she was such a low, low, low person, but he still cares what she thinks, meaning that he believes himself to be lower. 
She understood from it all what a woman, if she loves sincerely, always understands before anything else. Namely, that I myself was unhappy. Finally, the character comes to realise that he is unhappy with himself. Despite trying to give us all his philosophy and advice. It would be awkward now to raise my head and look straight into Lisa's eyes. Uh, speak just for yourself and your miseries in the underground and don't go... S oh, saying we all. Yeah, so he says this line. Speak just for yourself and your miseries in the underground and don't go saying we all. Well, he's done that the whole way through the book because he's assumed that we all want to read his book. He's assumed we all believe the same as him. But then he gives this advice. Don't go saying we all. So it contradicts himself. <laughs> So, I don't really understand what this whole book was about. I didn't get it at all. I didn't like it. The character was despicable. I feel like I wasted my time reading a lot of waffle at the start with crazy metaphors like something about a mouse, something about a stone wall, that I didn't really get the metaphors that he was making because at first I couldn't understand from where the philosophy was coming from because I, I didn't know what type of person he was. So I read all of this philosophy without understanding what type of person he was and that's because I couldn't see him in a scene. So it was, I feel, the philosophy part of the book. The first part of the book was a complete waste of time and then the story which I just thoroughly despised because I thought, why do I want to read about this despicable, lowly character who just hates himself? yet contradicts his every word, says he's amazing, and then tries so desperately to hang around with the people that he says that he despises. I despise you, but I so want to come to your party, yet I despise you and I'm so better than you, but please, please, please invite me to your party. Just, these, this is... The life, this is this book is written about an incredibly toxic person who I would never ever want in my life. So if you want to read a book that's written in the from the voice of an incredibly toxic, bitter, self loathing, people loathing air thief. Uh, just a poisonous person read that book uh, otherwise there's way better books to read with way more awesome characters which will actually give you a better philosophy of life so that's what I think about that one